Howdy, April Pregal. It's Ms. Kosh. I am continuing with the topic 2.14, uh, which is logarithmic function context and data modeling. In this previous one, we were using systems to solve for a and b. We had, they had given us an x and a y value, or well, two x and y values, so we wrote a system of equations. Um, and now they've given us this lovely set of data. Um, I think this one kind of ties into this graph right here, where they were showing us church size in comparison with average salary of the clergy or whatever. Okay. Um, so... Church size, average salary. So we're going to come back. Um, did you know in my, I was, I'm picking up from where I left off. If I come in here, I can come over and delete all of that list. Delete all of that list. And I'm going to enter in, I should have done this without you watching me, but um, how we doing? We're having a good day. I hope so. I'm just wasting time as I type these in. Um, okay. There's our first column, I think. We'll find out if I did it wrong. 42, 58. Somebody tell me if I type it in wrong. Um, can you see both where I'm supposed to go? Um, 450 was 88, and 650 was 95, and uh, 900 was 110, 125, 138, 175. Hopefully I did all that correctly. Okay, and so now I can come over here. I, when I go to graph, it's not a bad idea to check to see how I'm going to set it. I wanted a scatter plot. I want to use list one and list two. So now I can graph. Oh, well, there we go. Graph. And that does look pretty logarithmic. Um, so what did they tell us to do? Write an equation. Okay, so calculate. We can come over to the log equation. Notice log, it automatically spits it out in the a plus b times the natural log of x form. I'm going to copy this, take this into y equals. Um, and there I drew it for me. So it looks pretty like it modeled it relatively well. Okay, so, oops, I forgot to write down my numbers. Well, oops, and then I hit the wrong one. Okay, there it is. Um, you know what? I don't need to write it down, but the, the A value is this negative 91 point whatever, and then the B value is 29 point whatever. Um, there you go. Okay, so now it says, using the model found in part A, what is the predicted annual salary in thousands of dollars from a pastor whose church size is 500 people? Okay, so 500 people is going to be the x value, and so we're looking for y. Um, so if you remember, I came, I told it to copy it into my graph. So here it is, but it's not turned on, so I'm going to select it to turn it on. I'm going to, um, actually, before I draw, I'm going to go to my window. Um, that's a lot of x values. That's funny. Okay, hang on just a minute. Usually what happens is when I graph here, um, I don't expect, my x went from 75, oh no, to 5,000, that's pretty big. Never mind, right? Yeah, okay, never mind. Let's come back. I was thinking, oh my goodness, I can't believe that so many, that x value is so big, but then I realized that, yeah, it should be. So it's bigger. We had an x value of 5,000, and so our, oh, our window would, did go to uh, what did I just have? I don't know. Negative 10 will work. Okay. Um, my, um, I need an x value of 500 um, people, and uh, we should be able to be in that window. Okay. So, menu. Nope. What am I doing? Let's go graph. There it is. I can do G solve and find, come over to YCAL. So when my x value is 500, I have roughly a, a salary of um, $94,000. Is that what they're telling us? That sounds great. I need to switch professions. <laughs> uh, not funny. Um, not funny at all. <laughs> okay, uh, there we go. So the predicted salary for a pastor whose church size is 500. There, there could be the question of how big of a church do you expect if they have, I'm changing the question, if they have, if, if a pastor makes $100,000, how big do we expect his church to be? So then we can do G solve and we can come over and do X count. And so we're saying he makes $100,000. And so we'd expect him to have 604-ish. Um, um, is this people? Families? I don't know what the size of the church. Okay. Um, very good. Let's keep going. So here's our last example. Um, this one... When I worked it at first, it made me think a little bit because it's, the trick is trying to keep all the variables straight. Um, for, that's what I found. So the method to, there, we're, we're measuring the intensity of sound um, in decibels. So the intensity level, this decibel right here, uh, the decibels have a sound intensity in watts. 
I guess. This is not an area that I know a lot about. Um, the sound of noisy traffic has an intensity of this. Okay, so this intensity um, corresponds to this many decibels. Okay, so what I have here is that when I have a um, B, not B, but like beta, I guess. Is that beta? Mm. Of 1 times 10 to the negative 5 would be equal to A plus B times the log of 1 times 10 to the negative 5. Um, and this would equal, corresponds to 70 decibels. Okay, I'm writing this in a weird spot, but let's clean this up for a minute. 1 times 10 to the negative 5 is just 10 to the negative 5. Log base 10 of 10 to the negative 5, this becomes negative 5. Um, B times negative 5. So my first equation is A minus 5B equals 70. Okay? The next equation we're using, um, you know what, let's change colors. Then they tell us a loud concert has an intensity of 1 and it corresponds to 120. Okay, so this beta of, oh, my pen is dying. Um, life is too short for a bad pen, but the video is running, so sorry. A plus B times log of 1 is equal to 120. Well, log base 10 of 1 is just 0, so this B value it's B times 0, so that's gone. So my other equation is, well, A, if I want to write 0 B, but A equals 120. Okay, so find the values. Well, we found A. I'm going to get switch back to a good pin. And then I can just say, okay, 120 minus 5B is equal to 70. Minus 5B is equal to subtract that. What is that? Negative 50. And so B is equal to 10, assuming that I know how to do basic arithmetic. Um, so my equation was this. Beta of I, I guess is how you say that, is equal to A, 120, plus B was 10, log of I. Okay, so now they say a human eardrum can burst when sound reaches an intensity of that. Okay, so this intensity is the I value. According to the model, what is the predicted number of decibels required? Okay, so we're looking for the Y value when they give us the X, or we're looking for the, the output when they give us the input. Um, so let's plug this in. We want this beta of... 1 times 10 to the 4 is equal to 120 plus 10 times log of 1 times 10 to the 4. The 1 does nothing for us. Log base 10 of 10 to the 4th is 4. So I get 120 plus 10 times 4. 10 times 4 is 40. This is 160. Decibels, is that our, yeah, so decibels. And there we go. Those are the two uh, 214 notes. So go practice. Good luck.